Good morning, students. Welcome to our lesson for today. In this lesson, we will draw or make conclusions relating to statistics and findings to the original question. We will use different statistical diagrams, interpret them, and make conclusions based on the information that are given. We will use the words statistical diagrams, conclusion. When we are making conclusions, we can use different statistics like mean, median, mode, range, or by looking at the general shape of the diagram to describe the distribution and compare different distributions or different data sets. Let's take this first example. Mr. Lopez makes a pottery of vases. He sells them on the internet. The stemative diagram shows the prices of the vases he sells in one week. Mr. Lopez makes a profit if the mean price is greater than $25.50. Does Mr. Lopez make a profit this week? So we want to find here the mean because to be able to know if he's making a profit, we need to show that the mean price is greater than $25.50. Now recall that to find the mean, you have to add all the data points and divide by how many data points are in there. So if you count, there are 17 data points here, 17 different prices in one week. So let's get the mean. So we will add, as the key here indicates, 24 line 20 means $24.20. So the first data point is $24.20, $24.33 or 24.33, 24.79. We add all of those and then divide by 17 because there are 17 data points. And we get of 435.20 divided by 17, which gives us $25.60. So is this greater than $25.50? Yes. So that means Mr. Lopez makes a profit this week because the mean price from the stemative diagram is $25.60, which is greater than $25.50. For this next example, we're given two different data and we have to compare them. The bar line graphs shows the number of goals scored by two hockey teams in 25 matches. Tanisha thinks that Allerton scores more goals on the average than Batesville. So let's see, is Tanisha correct? Let's see why she can be correct and why she can be wrong. So first, let us look at the mean, median, and mode of this two different data. Okay, so let's start with the mode. Why Tanisha could be right? So, what is the mode of the goals of Allerton team and what is the mode of the goals of Batesfield team? So, remember, mode is the most popular number. So, in terms of bar graphs or bar line graphs, that it is indicated by the tallest bar. So, from the Allerton, the tallest bar is at four goals from so the mode for Allerton is four goals the tallest bar in the Batesfield is three go goals so Batesfield the mode is three goals so if you see here Allerton has higher mode so that makes Tanisha could be right because Allerton has higher mode four compared to three now let us look at the median and the mean. The median is the middle number. So there are 25 matches. 
So for 25 matches, half of that is 12.5. So that means he rounded up 13 score. Okay, so 12, 25 matches divided by 2 is 12.5. Rounded up goes to 13 score. So 13 score is the middle. So we will count from the lowest 13 score. So from the Allerton, they scored 0, 1, 0 goals. So that's 1. And then they have 5, 1 goals. So that would be 1 plus 5, now 6. And then they have 8, 2 goals. So now, so far we have now 6 data points plus the 8 data points, that's 14. So if you see 13 score is in this bar, which tells us that the median is 2 goals for under turn. For Bates field, so for the first bar, it has 1. There is no bar at 1 goal, so we'll take the second bar, which is 2 goals. 2 goals is 6. So now we add to the first, 1 plus 6, we now have 7 data points. We Remember, we want 13. So we go on for the third bar, which has 12. So now we add 7 plus 12. Now this gives us the 19th data point, up to the 19th. So 13th is in this bar. Because this is 8 to 19, so 13 is in there. So this gives us that the median of Bates field is 3. How about the mean? Now mean is we will add all the data points. So let's start with Allerton. Allerton get 0 once. So that would be 1 times 0. That they get 1 5 times. So that would be 1 times 5. They get 2 8 times, so that will be 2 times 8. Then we add all those. Then we have the, we will divide by 25 because there are 25 matches. So that would be the mean of Allerton will be 2.52 goals. While for Bates, they have 1 0 goals, so that's 1 times 0. They have six, two goals, so that would be six times two. They have 12, three goals, so that would be three times 12. And then you add everything and then divide by 25. That would be 2.88. So the mean goals for Bates field is 2.88. So we see here, but by the mean and median, Tanisha could be wrong because Bates field have higher mean 2.88 compared to 2.52 and it has also higher median 3 compared to 2 for Allerton. Next example, the students in class 8B ran the school cross country or long distance running course in their PE lesson. The frequency diagram shows the time taken by the students in class 8P to complete the course. So the PE teacher says, if 60% of you can finish the course in less than 15 minutes, you can all go early for lunch. So the question is, can they go early for lunch? So let's look at this. So we want the time that are less than 15 minutes. So on the x-axis, it shows us the time. So 15 minutes is in here, and we want how many of them scores less than. So that means to the left, going 5. So 5 minutes to 15, but it should be less than 15. So these two bars here shows us the number of students that finishes the course in less than 15 minutes. So now let's see. When you want the percentage, it's the proportion. So it will be the number of students that finishes in less than 15 minutes divided by the total number of students. So we need to find total number of students. So let's find how many for each bar. 
So the first bar, 5 to 10 minutes, we have 5 students. 10 to 15 minutes, we have 14 students. Those who finish 15 to 20 minutes, we have 10 students. And those 20 to 25 minutes, we have one student. So all together, the total student is 5 plus 14 plus 10 plus 1, 30 students all together in the class. And those who have finished in less than 15 minutes are 5 plus 14, which is 19 students. And the percentage, 19 divided by 30. So remember, do not switch them around. 19 divided by 30. Part divided by whole. That will give you a decimal. And then times 100 to make it percentage. So 19 over 30 times 100, that is 63 and one third percent or 63.3333, the repeating decimal. Okay. So yes, the students in class 8P will have an early lunch because 63.333 is greater than 60%. Here an example of trend lines or line graphs. So we will be comparing the trends. A sports shop sells the rugby shirts of two teams, Scarlets and Dragons. The line graph shows the number of rugby shirts the shop has in stock each week in an eight week period. So for the um, X axis, we see the week number and the number of stocks on the y-axis. So red is for the scarlets and blue is for the dragon's shirts. So now describe the trend in sales of the scarlet's rugby shirt. So let's look at how the line, the red line graph is behaving. So if you see it is falling so we say, and it is like almost straight line, almost the same uh, gradient. If you remember our gradient, it's almost a, a straight line. That means it has a steady fall. So the level of stock is falling at a steady rate. Okay, so sales are steady. How about the dragon shirt? So if you look at the dragon shirt, this is the blue line graph so it is closer to the x-axis so that means it has a lower rate of sales and it is not it is not uh, very it's not very um, straight so it's a bit curvy especially when it goes to week five to six to seven and eight weeks so it has a slowing rate it becomes slower and slower so we say the level of stock is falling at a reducing rate so the it is not falling at a constant rate like the scarlet so the dragon's shirt is being sold at a reducing rate so um if you see here week one they have a bigger uh, rate of sale than compared to seven and eight so that's what it means by reducing rate so um, they are able to sell faster in the beginning and it becomes slower and slower as they go week six week seven and week eight now do you think the shop has enough scarlet rugby shirts in stock for week nine so for week 9, we can use these trend lines to predict. So let's look at Scarlet. So if it will go, the rate will be steady like this. At week 9, they will not have enough because the line will reach the x-axis, which means zero stops before week 9. So they, the trend continues, they will sell out halfway through the week before they reach week nine okay how about the dragons so if you see the dragons if we will use we will continue the trend okay the trend so it will be 
it will not reach zero yet at year uh, at week nine. So that means they will only will be able to like sell about one or two shirts. So they will still have about four shirts in stock for week nine.